Tonight we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand and join us in singing our ancient hymn, number 637, This Day God Gives. divine institution. 
Word of the Lord. And should he come in the second or third watch 
and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a story about two business associates who traveled to a foreign country and they found their way to the hotel where they would attend a conference. Both of them had rooms on the 51st floor of this rather big high-rise hotel. On the second night of the conference, the two returned to the hotel after dinner only to find out that the one elevator in this building was not working, out of service. What were they going to do? They were on the 51st floor. Well, they decided they were young enough they would make a go of it. But they decided to make the experience of walking up the 51 flights somewhat interesting. They came up with a strategy. For the first 17 floors, they would tell funny stories to pass the time. For the second 17 floors, they would tell scary stories to pass the time. And for the final 17 floors, they would tell sad stories simply to pass the time. Well, amazingly, they managed to make it to that 51st floor. And having arrived at their, their rooms, one of the businessmen turned to the other and said, and now I have the saddest story of all, his buddy asked, what is it? I left my room key at the front desk <laughs> on the first floor. Have you ever forgotten your keys? Were you on the 51st floor with no elevator? Where were you when you forgot your keys? What did you do? Did you climb in a window? How frustrating it is for us when we think we're prepared and we're not. Like those times when we don't have our key lost or forgotten. How do you handle those situations when you find you haven't prepared properly? And then you think, why wasn't I prepared? Why wasn't I ready? Maybe there are too, too many other things were going on at the time. Stretch too thin, forgetful stressed out. Well, we like to be prepared, and we don't like to be without the things we need when we need them. Well, the Gospel today is really about preparedness. It's about being ready. Jesus says to the disciples, be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. So Jesus is telling them, in other words, be vigilant, be prepared. They need to be awake to let the master in when he returns. So it makes sense. The door would be bolted to the house or to the compound. The servants would have to open the bolted door for the master. And if he returned in one of those watches of the night, well, then it would be very dark outside. Let street lights. No electricity. The only lights would come from the little lamps, the little oil lamps. Who kept them burning? The servants. It was their job to keep those little oil lamps burning, especially at night so the master could find his way back home. Whenever we hear Jesus make a reference to the master, the master of the house, we can usually assume that he's telling a story about himself. He is he is the master. Jesus is the master. So how are we to be ready, ready for his return? It's not simply a story about unbolting a door and having the oil lamps lit. It's about preparing ourselves for a time when he will come again. We prepare for Jesus' second coming. We prepare also 
for the end of our own earthly lives for our journey from this life to the next. And we prepare ourselves by a life that is vigilant, that is ready, and that is prepared. The Gospel is calling us to get our lives in order, to make sure that our spiritual lives are strong, vibrant, ready for a day and hour we do not know. Because all of us will, will all come to the end of our earthly pilgrimage. This time of our earthly existence will, will end. Our lives are finite. Sometimes we don't even like to consider that fact, but they are. Sometimes we have in our heads what a long life might mean, but we have no guarantee of whatever we consider that long life to be. It may not be as long as I envisioned. Jesus says, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. It will happen for each of us. So why is it that our spiritual lives are not as ready, as vigilant, as prepared as we maybe would like them to be? I suspect we can sometimes be the procrastinators. I'll do that later. I know I should be going to Mass every Sunday. I know I should be charitable. I know I should take time to pray. I know I should share my talents with the church, and I'll start tomorrow, and then tomorrow. So we can procrastinate, all of us, in our lives of faith. We can also become stressed out with the responsibilities we have, job, family, and somehow we're trying to fit in somewhere that relationship with Jesus, something I just don't give a lot of attention to all the time. Maybe it's even that I'm angry with God, angry at God, angry at the church, and I, I'm having trouble going forward with my life of faith. I might be stuck, and if I'm stuck, it's difficult to be ready or prepared or vigilant. I'm sure there are many reasons, very unique to each of us, for why we might not be as ready or as vigilant or as prepared for the Master's return when it comes to keeping my faith life, my relationship with Him vibrant, alive. But the Gospel today just might be that occasion for us to reflect on what we might want to change. So let the Gospel be that opportunity for reflection. Might I be more ready, more prepared, more vigilant in my own life of faith? I'm sure that many of us as children prayed the short prayer, now I lay me down to sleep. I think it's one of the first prayers I learned. My two, my two unmarried aunts would sometimes have a job of babysitting. I think I learned it from them kneeling down at the bedside where I was staying overnight. They would too, that taught me. Now I lay me down to sleep. Well, of course, I Googled it, and I found that really it's a shortened version of an old English prayer, a longer prayer. It goes like this because it has this attitude, sentiment of, of being ready for God. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John bless the bed that I lie on. Before I lay me down to sleep, I give my soul to Christ to keep. Four corners to my bed, four angels there a spread, two to foot and two to head, and two to carry me when I'm dead. I go by sea, I go by land, the Lord made me by his right hand. If any danger comes to me, Sweet Jesus Christ, deliver me. He's the branch and I'm the flower. Pray God send me a happy hour. And if I die before I wake, I pray that Christ, my soul, will take.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn to the Father and ask that through the mercy of his Son, he will hear our prayers. For all God's people, that we will never waver in our faith as we work with continued hope toward the coming of God's eternal kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, may they work together in the renewed commitment for peace and justice for people of every nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For indigenous people around the world, especially those who encountered Pope Francis in his recent reconciliation pilgrimage, that they may experience healing from past wounds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers of our parish circle of prayer, for those impacted by the coronavirus, and for peace in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially John and Rose Giacchi, for whom we offer this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, guide us on our journey and help us to walk the pathway of your Son, Jesus, who is the bread of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Father. 
Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Spirit in Christ, 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernard, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, Robert, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we remember John and Rose Jockey. Give them admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever.
of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, and only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. offer this act of spiritual communion for those at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you are already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, so let me never be separated from you.
May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements. We thank you always for your weekly contributions. The baskets are at the doors. The bulletins are there. Our parish cookout is in two weeks. So it's two weeks from this Saturday, from tonight. Two weeks from now, we'll be going out to get some uh, hamburgers and hot dogs. So please join us. Uh, we just need to kind of get a better count. So there's a form in the bulletin you can return in the collection basket, or you can uh, email us at the parish office. The Knights of Columbus will be helping with grilling that night. We'll have water, um, cold water, and if other uh, beverages or side dishes you can bring um, for yourselves or family. So join us a couple of weeks from now. The golf tournament continues to be planned. A lot of work going into it. There's a form in the bulletin. Get your foursome together. Uh, send your names in so we know that you'll be playing. Take advantage of sponsoring one of the possible items for the golf tournament. We're grateful for that. We thank you for donations of baby items you might have noticed coming in into the uh, gathering space. There's a little playpen there. We'll collect baby items. We'll be going to agencies in the diocese where we help, especially women with uh, difficult pregnancies or uh, having a tough time. So any items, there's a list of them in the bulletin. Thank you for those. Uh, Bible study will be starting in September. We're looking at the possibility of a grief group. Um, and wedding anniversaries will be celebrated at the cathedral. A lot of information in the bulletin. Altar service will also be returning soon. Uh, we're recruiting them. We've got them for some masses, but spread the word. Young people who want to serve will train them. So uh, bring them back, back slowly but surely. So. Keep cool out there. It's still very warm. Um, I'm supposed to look after um, my elders. So if you're my elders, you know, hydrate, stay uh, cool, refreshed. And if I'm your elder, I'll follow the advice you give me. The Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. As we go forth, please join us in singing our recessional hymn, number 555, All the Ends of the Year. And thanks to Tony for filling in on the keyboard tonight. Thank you very much, and Sarah. Thank you.